and I, uh, the next book, everybody it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my September wrap-up for 2020 I read a total of 15 books so I will be splitting this up into three different parts five books each so this is part one so without further ado let us get started the first two books that I'm going to talk about are e-arcs that I received from Penguin Teen so thank you so much to Penguin Teen for sending me copies of these but I figured to make it easier on my editing self we're gonna start with those so the first book is he must like You by Danielle Young Ullman and I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. So this book follows Libby who is in her senior year of high school. She is just trying to work really hard at her waitressing job in order to make a little bit of money to go off to college. Her father is threatening to kick her out of the house in order to open his own Airbnb after her brother abandoned the family in order to go bartend in Greece. She makes things a little bit more complicated when she hooks up with one of her co-workers named Kyle and then one day on the job she loses her temper on a very handsy customer so this causes her to have to reevaluate her entire plan on leaving her small town and it's like the story of that. I actually liked this a lot more than I thought I was going to. It definitely dives into a lot more heavy topics than I thought it was going to. It talks a lot about mental illness and mental health, victim blaming, consent, sexual harassment, and sexual assault and it also has a big focus on rape culture which is done in a very light-hearted way which I really enjoyed because I know that this topic can be very triggering for a lot of people. I thought Libby was a great main character. I loved her and I felt that she was very relatable. I think that a lot of people will be able to read her story and see themselves in it. I loved her humor and the way that she handled the situation she was in. She was very headstrong and didn't back down to certain individuals. I was also a big fan of the side characters and Libby's friend group. They were just so supportive of her and what she was going through and I think that that was a great addition to the story. I was also a really big fan of the side plot of her father's declining mental health. I do wish that we saw the outcome of that, but I think that it was a really great addition to the story, especially because I'm sure a lot of people are dealing with mental illness and declining mental health at this time because of, you know, quarantine. So I just think that it was really well done. So yeah, overall, I actually really did like this one. I gave it a four out of five stars and I definitely recommend you guys check it out. The next e arc that I received is called Hara Lake by Kat Ellis and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars as well. So this follows Lola Knox who is the daughter of a very famous horror screenwriter. After her father is attacked by an unknown suspect, she is sent off to Hara Lake which is her mother's hometown and the setting for her father's most notorious horror film. So while she's there she lives with her grandmother and she starts to explore her mother's hometown and she learns a couple of secrets that she didn't know about and it's basically her learning about her mother's disappearance when she was younger. I was initially drawn to this book solely based off of the cover. I find it so like spooky and atmospheric so I was really intrigued by it. I really loved learning more about Haro Lake and the history behind it. I was so invested in Haro Lake and Lola's story and how she was connected to this little small mining town. I wanted to know everything about it and I think that the inclusion of the urban legend that the story mostly follows was really cool. I really like the complex relationship between Lola and her father. She's very drawn towards him because her mother abandoned her at such a young age but he is just so controlling and manipulative but she still idolizes him so so much. The biggest complaint that I have about this book was the repetition in the writing style, specifically the word optimal. It was like every other paragraph had the word optimal in it and I don't know if that was like a choice that the author took but it just drove me crazy after I noticed it. But overall like I think that it was a very spooky atmospheric read. I definitely think that it would be great to pick up around Halloween time which is next month so definitely check it out if you guys are interested. The next book I have I gave five out of five stars. It is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. I loved this book way more than I probably should have. This book follows Vanessa who when she was 15 years old she started a relationship with her 42 year old English teacher. Now, years later, another student has come forward claiming that this same 
teacher sexually assaulted and abused her and she's asking Vanessa to testify against her. The only thing is is that Vanessa doesn't believe that she was a victim. She believes that they were in love and it's like the story of her trying to come to terms with if it was love or if it was abuse. So as someone who is a huge fan of psychology, I knew that I was going to adore this book because it's kind of like a psychoanalysis of a woman who was abused. I really liked how the story was told through flashbacks when Vanessa was 15, so you saw what she was thinking during those times, as well as different times in her life as a young adult, as well as now when she is 32 years old. I just found it so fascinating to be able to dive into Vanessa's mind while she was reflecting on her relationship with Strain. It was just such an interesting experience to be able to see that she had justifications for everything that happened and she truly didn't believe that she was being manipulated or abused by her teacher, but as a reader you know that this isn't the case. I just think that the overall depiction of the psychological abuse was so well written. I didn't know whether I wanted to shake Vanessa and yell at her or give her a hug. The book is really intense. The emotions are very raw. I definitely think that you need to be in the correct mindset to pick this book up. I'm so glad that I did and I definitely recommend people do pick it up because it's a really good read, but definitely make sure you are prepared for the topics in this book. The next book that I have is The Accident Season by Moira Foley Doyle, and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So this follows Kara and her family who every October enters the accident season, which is a period of time where they just get injured repeatedly. And this season they have been warned that it is probably going to be the worst accident season that they've ever encountered. And then one day at school, Kara realizes that an unpopular girl named Elsie has gone missing and nobody seems to remember her and it's kind of like those two stories merging together. I did really like how this book had two different plot lines that were kind of woven together. I was very intrigued by the accident season, but I do wish that we got a little bit more information about why this was happening to her family. I think that the plot line of Elsie's situation was a little bit too predictable for me. I called it right from like the very, very beginning. So that was a big disappointment to me and definitely brought my enjoyment of the story down a little bit. I did enjoy the paranormal aspect of this book. I think that the middle dragged on a little bit, but I did like how it delved more into like more serious topics like domestic abuse and mental illness and sexual assault. I wasn't really the biggest fan of the main character Kara so I didn't really care what happened to her. I was more interested in her sister Alice and B, her friend, so I kind of wish that it was more of a focus on their story rather than Kara. I also wasn't the biggest fan of the romance in the book and I kind of just wish that it was left out altogether and there was more of a focus on the accident season and finding Elsie, but overall like it was okay. I think that it was another great atmospheric Halloween-y book, so definitely check it out for next month. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about for this part one of the wrap-up is Beasts of the Night by Tochi Onibuchi, and I give this a three out of five stars. So this follows Taj, who is an Aki, which means that he has the ability to make other people's sins manifest as shadow beasts, which he ends up eating afterwards. When an Aki eats a sin, they gain a tattoo on their bodies that depicts the animal that the sin was representing. The Aki continue to eat other people's sins until they run out of skin on their bodies for new tattoos, which ultimately kills them in the end, and it's like the story of that. So I don't even really know how I feel about this book, honestly. It was very average to me. I was very bored throughout a lot of it. I didn't really know what was going on. The idea of the Sin Beast and the Aki was very interesting, but I really wish that we knew more about like why certain people became Aki because it's not something that they were born with. They just kind of became one and I didn't really understand why some people became one and why other people didn't. Like, does something have to happen in their life for it to occur? Like, I don't know. I didn't get that from the book. And another huge complaint that I had was that the Aki were so stigmatized in their community and it didn't really make sense to me because they were helping the other people live more 
pure lives, but they were so hated in the community and didn't really make sense to me. I don't know if I missed it <laughs> and just wasn't paying enough attention to the story because I just didn't care, but it just confused me. I liked Taj as a main character enough, but I did find myself mixing up the characters. I don't know if it's because there were so many or I just couldn't keep the names straight. I was just honestly confused throughout most of this book, so it's very average to me. Three out of five stars. Meh. Alright everyone, that was part one of my wrap up for September 2020. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these books and what you thought of them and stay tuned for part two and I'll see you in that video. Goodbye!